front-end and back-end servers. A front-end server is a server that doesn't host user mailboxes or public folder stores. In fact, a front-end server really doesn't do much more than relay traffic to the back-end servers, where the mailboxes, public stores and everything else you'd expect to see on an Exchange server is stored. Now whether you're using the standard edition of Exchange 2003 or the Enterprise edition, both of them support the configuration of front-end and back-end servers. The first thing we'll need to do is install a second Exchange 2003 server into our network. Now we'll run through this quickly because we already have a video dedicated to installing Exchange. So once you drop your Exchange 2003 CD-ROM into your drive, the splash screen will appear as you see here, and then we'll select Exchange Deployment Tools. Now as this is an additional server we'll be installing and not our first one, we'll choose the second option which is to install Exchange 2003 on additional servers. And again, we'll get the same sort of screen we saw when we installed our first Exchange server. And to make life easier for the purposes of this video, we've gone ahead and installed all the prerequisites. So we can jump straight down to the bottom, skip all steps 1 to 6, and go straight to step 7, which is to install our Exchange 2003 server. And this, of course, starts up the Exchange installation wizard. So we'll click on Next. And the first thing we have to do is accept the license agreement. So we'll click I Agree, and we'll choose Next. And now we have to enter in our license key. So I'll pause the video, enter in my license key, and then I'll click Next. Okay, now we need to specify a typical minimum or custom installation. Now we'll just leave the default here of typical, and we'll choose Next. And then we'll have to agree with the per seat licensing. So make sure you have the required number of client access licenses, and we have, so we'll agree, and then we'll choose Next. Now we need to choose which administrative group this server will be a part of. If we select the drop down box, we've got two choices, our New York and our London administrative group. So what we'll do is we'll make this server an exchange server for New York and we'll choose that and we'll select next. And now we can also select a routing group. Now our, our drop down box will display the same options of New York and London. We'll leave New York, New York, sounds a bit like a song, and we'll choose next. Now finally we get our installation summary, so if everything looks great, we'll click Next, and then Exchange will begin installing. Now I'll just pause this video and we'll return once our second Exchange server has been installed. Okay, we're done. Exchange has been installed. Now let's get to work and make this server a front-end server. So we'll open up the System Manager. We'll click on Start, All Programs, Microsoft Exchange, and then we'll launch the System Manager. So the first thing we have to do is ensure that our front-end server isn't being used as a recipient update service server and that it doesn't have any mailboxes on it. If it does, we'll get an error anyway and we can verify this by expanding our administrative groups, expanding our New York administrative group, expanding servers, we'll see that we do now have server 1 and server 2, and if we right-click on server 1 and select properties, and then we'll select to make this one a front-end server and we'll click apply. And you'll see that we get an error because it's currently being used as a recipient update service server. So therefore we can't proceed. So we'll uncheck this box and click OK. Now incidentally, if we really did want to make server 01 the front end server, what we'd need to do is go and expand recipients, go to our recipient update services, and on the right we can see that we've got two currently configured items. So what we'd do is we'd right click on our enterprise configuration 1 and we'd select properties. And then we'd come over here to Browse and we'd change our server from Server01 to a different server and transfer the role. Now once we've actually done that, then we could come over here and we could delete the second option here for our test domain. Now the next thing we'd want to do if we wanted to make Server01 our uh, front-end server is delete any mailbox stores that we have on the front-end server. So what we'd do is we'd expand our Server01, expand our first storage group, and then we'd right-click on the mailbox store and select Delete. Now this step isn't actually required, but it will make our server run more efficiently and it will make it more secure. And once you've removed this mailbox store, what we'd do is we'd open up Windows Explorer and we'd delete the database files as well. Now the database files will be located in this directory that you see here. Okay, but as it's Server 2 that we want to make our front-end server, we'll right-click on our Server 02 and we'll select Properties. And then we'll come and select the box, this is a front-end server, and we'll click OK. And we'll just get a message that tells us this server won't actually become a front-end server until we either reboot it or restart all of the Exchange services, as well as the POP, IMAP, and HTTP services as well. And there's also a recommendation here to use SSL. 
but we'll ignore that for the moment, we'll click OK. And what we'll do now is we'll reboot our server, and in the meantime, I'll pause the video and we'll return once this server has been rebooted. Alright, our server is restarted and this server, Server02, is now a front-end server.